everyone, and thank you for attending today's session, Pro Tools First, Working with Tracks. We're very happy to have with us Andy again for his second in this four-part session. Uh, so as most of you know, uh, the webinar is being recorded. We do have your audio muted at this time. Uh, you can ask questions in the questions field, and we are also kind of monitoring on the social. So why don't you go ahead and type in and let us know where you're at. Uh, pinging us from. Uh, looks like we got one from the UK already and one from Brazil, which is awesome. Uh, the sessions will be recorded and posted back to avid.com so you can play them back later or share them with your friends. Please raise your hand if you are having a technical difficulty and I'll come to you and try to resolve that issue so we don't interrupt the Andy session. So as most of you know, Andy Hagerman is not only an AVID employee, but he's also one of our AVID master instructors. And he's been in the industry for quite a while and he's up pretty early in Japan. So we're gonna go ahead and let uh, Andy get started. So Andy, I'm gonna go ahead and hand this to you. Cool, cool. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, as uh, as Dawn said, uh, my name is Andy Hagerman and I'm the audio curriculum manager. It's just now coming up on midnight here in Tokyo. so. Let's see if we can't keep uh, keep awake and get through this. Now, what we're going to talk about in this particular webinar, real quick, we're going to do a quick hit on the things you need to do in order to create tracks and get audio on them real quickly. It's going to be very simple, just giving you the stuff that you need to do to get that work done very quickly. So let me start by sharing my screen. And to, to begin with, um, Don, you see in my screen there? Am I doing this correctly? Okay, I'm assuming that. Yes, you guys sorry. Are fantastic, <laughs> you fantastic. Um, great, fantastic. So, um, real quickly before we dive into what we're going to be talking about today, just to give you a sense, if you're getting started with Pro Tools first and getting started with Pro Tools in general, um, there are four sessions. Each one's a half an hour that will kind of get you from the very beginning to a point where you can start to do some serious work. Um, the first session was back on May 26th, um, getting started, which was talking about how to create a new project. Um, that is, uh, and Don will let me know more about this, that was recorded and is available on Avid's blog site. Um, and then the sessions, second session is today. Um, on June 21st, we'll be talking about some basic editing. Um, and on June 23rd, We'll be going into mixing and all of these are going to be recorded. So again, you can share them, you can review them, you can take a look at them afterwards. Um, so they'll be ready on demand. But let's talk about today's thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about creating tracks in a number of different ways. First of all, creating a blank, empty audio track, a, 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 a blank place where you can put audio files and get things going from the menu shortcuts. And we're going to give you a couple of little secret shortcuts, not secrets, but a lot of people don't know. Them. Um, we're going to talk about how to import audio into a blank track, how to create a new blank, a new track while you're recording. Um, and because we're going to be importing some audio, just getting started and actually kind of working our way into next seminars uh, topic of editing. We're going to talk about the edit modes. And then the final thing we'll talk about today is a thing called a master fader. Okay. So let's, let's get started real quick. And I'm going to bring in my dashboard window. So right now, um, Pro Tools First is already launched. And if you take a look at the dashboard, you'll see I've got three different projects. And if you remember from the first seminar, you can tell that the blue project here is a cloud-based project. These other two, Blank Project and Making Tracks, are great. These are your local projects, which you can have an unlimited number of. So I'm gonna go in here to Making Tracks and open up this project. Great, fantastic. And I've got essentially an empty session just waiting for me to create some tracks. Now, let's start off with the most basic way. To create a new track, go up to the Track menu and choose New. Now, this is something you'll probably wind up doing two or three times and then figuring out that you're going to be creating a lot of tracks during your professional life. So if there's a shortcut to remember, here's the first one. To create a new track, oops, oops, I didn't create that. Um, to create a new track, go to Shift Command N on a Mac or on a uh, Windows computer, it's Shift Control N or sh Shift uh, 
yeah, Shift Control N, which will create a new track. So let me go ahead and I'm holding down on my Mac, Shift Command and N, and that's going to open up the new track dialog box. Now, when you open up this dialog box, you can choose how many tracks you want to create. Let's start off with one. The next thing you're going to have to choose is what kind of a track you want to create. Is it going to be a mono track or a stereo track? And you can choose by clicking on here, mono or stereo. Okay. And I'm going to choose a stereo track here. And you can choose here, the next thing after you choose if it's gonna be mono or stereo, you can choose the track type. And we've got a lot of different track types. We're gonna talk about uh, aux tracks and some of the other tracks a little bit later on. But for today, we're just gonna focus on audio tracks and master fader tracks. So in this case, I want to create an audio track and it's going to be one stereo audio track. Now, you can choose whether that track is going to be sample-based or tick-based, which is a little bit outside of the scope of, of this seminar, but we can certainly talk about it later if you want to ask questions about that. And then we're going to name it. Um, by default, um, it wants to name the track Audio 1, okay? Um, that doesn't tell me too much about uh, what's going to be on that track. So usually what I'll do if I'm going to do some recording or if I've got um, a track that I know I'm going to use for a specific purpose, I'm going to name that track at this point for that purpose. But just so that I can show you how this works, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to let Pro Tools deal with its, its default naming just so I can show you how to rename tracks in just a moment. And I'm going to go back here and change my mind a little bit. And we're going to change this to two. I'm going to create for myself two Again, stereo audio tracks. And all I have to do here is click create, boom. And you can see here, I've got audio one and audio two. And they're, they're default names. And at some point I'm gonna want to uh, rename them. Now, if I'm gonna be recording, this might be all that I need to do. These tracks are all ready to be recorded, but I'm going to, for now, I'm going to import some audio to my track. And the way that I'm going to do that, so I'm going to go to a finder window and I'll go into files for import. And this is, there's a number of different ways you can import audio into track. This is probably the quickest one. And I'm going to choose, let's see here. I'm going to choose overheads and talkback. So I'm going to choose these two and I'm going to drag these wave files onto these tracks. You can go see over here, I've got two little blocks here, and you can see a little outline of these blocks. And wherever I let go of them, that's where our clips will be deposited. Now, one is named overhead. So this is clearly an overhead mic of a, of a drum track. And then this is a talkback mic from a drum kit. So at this point, I'm going to want to name my tracks descriptively. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead double click on the name, and I'm going to name this one Overheads, O-H. And if you want to, you can click OK, and you can close the window. But if you are if you want to rename a whole bunch of tracks at the same time, you can go to Previous or Next. Now, here's your first shortcut. If you hold down the Command key on a Mac or the Control key on a Windows computer and click the right and left arrow keys, it will cycle through the different tracks. So, you, so basically, um, they, it's it's the same thing as clicking the previous or next button. So I'm going to go ahead here to audio two, and I'm going to call this TB for talkback, and click OK. And now I've renamed those tracks. Now, so far, so good. At this point, everything is great, except we've got, um, we got a little bit of a problem. They're, these clips are not starting at the beginning of my session, and I want them to. Um, so at this point, we're going to start to talk a little bit about how I might be able to move those guys around. Now, if you take a, a look up here, we're going to talk more about editing in the third seminar. But if you take a look up here to this edit cluster uh, where my mouse is right now, you'll see selected is a, is a hand shaped tool. This is called the grabber. OK, and the grabber tool allows you to move your clips. Now, if you draw your eye towards the left you're going to see four buttons here. Shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. And these are your edit modes and they control, they determine 
how your clips are going to move when you use the grabber tool. So let's take slip mode first. Slip mode allows you to move your clips freely. So anywhere you want to place them, you can drag them. Now, sometimes that's exactly what you want. If you want to get something like a sound effect or something at exactly the right place, you just drag it around until it's in the right place. Sometimes it's a, a bit of a nightmare because it's hard to get. For example, if I wanted to get these two tracks exactly lined up, it would be very difficult to do so in slip mode. So let's move over here to grid. Now, grid follows your grid settings, which if you go over here, your grid settings are right over here. And I, my grid setting is set to be one quarter note. And I can change my grid setting by changing whatever values I want. So let's say I want to have it move by one bar increments. And at this point, now you'll see that that clip jumps to the nearest bar and it will snap to the nearest bar. And if I go over here, now I can very easily make sure that both of my clips are starting in this case at the beginning of bar nine. Spot mode is used mostly for post-production, but if you're dragging something or moving something on the timeline and you know exactly where it wants to go, then click on it and what will happen is the spot dialog box will open up. And when the spot dialog box opens up, then at that point you can type in numerically exactly the right place. Now, usually this is used for post-production. So I'll, I'll be working in minutes and seconds, for example, usually not in bars and beats, but you can use either one. And you would type in whatever specific location you want that clip to start at or end at. Okay. I don't want to use that. I'm going to use the final one here. Shuffle mode is real easy for doing what we want to do. I want to have all my clips start at the beginning. Fantastic. In shuffle mode, clips will automatically snap either to the previous clip or to the beginning of my timeline. You can see over here, if I drag over here, boom, they will, they'll snap to either the beginning of the timeline or if I wanted to drag talk back onto here, you can see it automatically snaps to the previous track. Um, this is really useful in, in music production, not as useful in post-production to be quite honest, um, but when you're making arrangements, you want drum clips to, to be back to back to back, um, shuffle mode is a great way to work. All right, so what we've done, let's go ahead and review this before we start to add some, some features on this. We went to file, or sorry, we went to track, create new track, which is shift command N. And I'm gonna open this up again, just because I wanna show you a couple other little shortcuts. Now, if I open this up, here's another couple shortcuts that's gonna make this even easier. If I hold down the command key on a, on a Windows computer or the control key on, a, 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 sorry, a command key on the Mac or control on the Windows computer and the left and right arrow keys, you can see that it allows me to change between mono and stereo without having to pull that menu down. If I hold down command and um, command on a Mac or control on a Windows machine and use the up and down arrow keys, it goes through the different track types without having to open up this menu here. So again, command up and down is going to allow me to go through the different track types. And if I hold down shift and command and use the up and down arrow keys, I can create multiple types of tracks at the same time. So I'm, I'm, I'm holding down shift command on, on a Windows computer, it'd be shift control, and the down arrow keys is gonna allow me to create multiple track types at the same time, or the up arrow key is gonna remove those rows. Okay, so that's your first bevy of shortcuts. And if you wanna take a look at it again, here's another way to look at it. So here's some shortcuts to change the track width, stereo to mono, again, command left, right arrows. On Windows, it's control left, right arrows. To change the track type, it's command and up and down arrows, or Windows, it's control up and down arrows. And to create a new track row, it's shift command and up and down arrows. On a Windows machine, it's shift control and up and down arrows. You're going to create a lot of tracks well, in, during your time in Pro Tools, learn these shortcuts and it's gonna make life a lot easier for you. I mean, you're gonna save boatloads of time. Now, this is this workflow is how you would create a blank track and then drag audio onto it. But what if you just wanna drag audio real, real quickly in and have tracks be created automatically? Here we go, let's take a look at that second workflow. So I'm going back into Pro Tools and what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go back to my finder window. Now I've only got these two tracks. 
So I'm going to go back into the, my finder window and I'm going to select everything else. I got the arpeggiator, bass, hat, kick, pad, room, and snare. Now I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go ahead and drag them onto my timeline. Now there's two places I could drag them. I could either drag them into the tracks list, which will create a new track and put them at the beginning of the track, or I could drag them onto the timeline and wherever I drop them, they will be deposited according to the edit mode that they're in. And if we take a look at the edit mode that we're in right now, which is shuffle, you'll know that if I drop these clips right now, they will automatically snap to the beginning. So let's go ahead and drop them now and boom, new tracks are created. The nice thing here in this case, notice that these are already named for the names of the files that are in there. So I don't have to rename those, those tracks, although I could if I wanted to. All right, so far so good. Let's make sure that we're hearing everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the beginning of my session and I will play this. not hearing it. Let's see what we got going on here. Here we go. Perfect. So I've got my tracks on there. I've got stuff that I want to work with. Um, now, the other thing that I want to do before I move on is I want to create another kind of track that's going to allow me to control the entire output volume. So let's say this is... This is good, but I want to punch it up a little bit. I could change the level of all of these tracks, but instead I want a track that will control my entire output. That's a thing called a master fader. So now let's use the shortcuts. Shift, Command, N, boom. Okay, that opens up the new tracks dialog box. Um, sh uh, command and the right arrow changes to stereo. Command and the down arrow is going to go through the different types. And I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna name this track for what I want it to be, Main Mon. And I'll go ahead and click on this. And now I have another track that is controlling the output of this output one and two. If I go ahead and click this little fader right here, I'm gonna get an output window. And now, I have my master volume control. Think of it as the as your main gain control for the output of your entire mix. And those are two of the most important kinds of tracks that you've got. Now, a couple other things. I want to make sure I'm not. Okay, so I think we're all good. Um, a couple other things, but before I jump into another workflow, uh, Don, uh, do we have any questions in the uh, in the pod? We do have a few questions that have come in. Um, so one question from uh, Jamie, he said, it's a really good refresh after some time away from Pro Tools. Uh, could you remind me if grid mode has a relative mode which moves things by your grid resolution rather than snaps it to the closest grid point? Uh, so Jamie, thank you for your kind words, first of all. Um, and yes, we do. And so let me jump into you here. So uh, that's a fantastic question. Um, I wasn't going to talk about this. I was going to talk about this on the next seminar when we talk about editing, but it's such a good question anyways. I'm going to, let's set something up here. Um, and I'll just go ahead and mute all my tracks. So this is not something we're going to hear, but I'm going to go ahead and put myself into slip mode. Uh, and I, I'm going to move this clip so that's just a little bit after, and I'll zoom in a little bit, you can see here that my clip starts just a little bit after the beginning of bar two. So, all right. Now, if I was in normal grid mode, the blue grid mode, that's called absolute grid mode. And in absolute grid mode, wherever you click, it's going to jump directly to the next grid line, okay? And, and in this case, again, my grid value is one bar. I'll put my bat self back into slip. Now, if you go ahead and click on this little triangle right next to the word grid, a little menu comes up saying absolute grid, which is blue, or let's go to relative grid, which is purple. And the way that relative grid, and, I, and Jamie said it great, is the way I explain it to students, absolute grid will move your clips to the nearest grid line, okay? Relative grid will move clips by the grid amount. Now, the grid amount right now, if I take a look at my grid, 
The grid amount is one bar. This is a little bit after one bar. If I'm in relative grid mode, it will move it by one bar. So it will maintain its relative distance from the nearest grid line. It won't move it to the nearest grid line. That's absolute grid mode. Or uh, in this case, if I'm in relative grid mode, it will maintain that, that distance from the, from the grid line. So hopefully, Jamie, that answers your question. Uh, Dawn, do we have any others? Uh, yeah, we've got a couple. Martin um, asked, did you say there were no limits to how many local projects you can create? So, so yeah, so the, the um, it, when, when you have cloud-based projects, your, your limit, I, if memory serves me correctly, is three. But you can have as many local projects as you want. Um, and your only limitation is the capacity of your system hard drive. Um, so all, all of the audio that's in your, uh, in your local projects is saved in a specific location on your system hard drive. Um, at some point, that's going to fill up, right? But, but we don't have any specific limitation on the number of local projects you have. Again, cloud-based projects is a different matter. That one you've got, you've got a limitation on. But for local projects, you don't. Okay, and we got one more other questions coming in for. Can you quickly um, go over working with MIDI tracks? Oh, sure. Um, so, so when you're dealing with MIDI tracks, um, let me go ahead and go to a new. Uh, b b b let me let me close this project and uh, open up a blank one just so I don't change this thing. Uh, how are we doing on time, Don? We are good. Okay. Go ahead. So, let me, so I'm going to go to here. And 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 by the way, um, and, and who asked the question about MIDI tracks? Um, it came in from YouTube. So it's okay. uh, Hanky Hill. Okay, Hanky Hill. Um, from YouTube. So um, again, when you create MIDI tracks or instrument tracks, um, you can do it the same way as as you would, um, any other kind of track. So again, Shift Command N, um, and I'm going to create for myself. If you take a look over here, there's two kinds of MIDI-based tracks that you can have. One is a MIDI track, and one is an instrument track. Now, let's start with a MIDI track. And I'm going to create a MIDI track, and I'm going to create, and we'll call this piano. Piano MIDI. And I'm going to go ahead and use my other shortcuts. So shift command and the down arrow, because in order to use, uh, in order to get MIDI to make a sound, I need to have an instrument play it. And a uh, MIDI track doesn't have any place for me to put a virtual instrument, but an aux track does. So I'm going to create a stereo. I'm going to use my shortcuts with this stereo auxiliary input track. And I'm going to call this VI virtual instrument piano. Great. Now I'm going to bring these up and make them a little bit taller so we can see them. Come on. There we go. I was getting a little claustrophobic. There we go. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record enable this so that anything that I play, and I'll turn on my MIDI keyboard here. Let's see if I can. Okay, there. So there's my MIDI keyboard. Fantastic. So I've got a MIDI keyboard right here, and this is MIDI data being played in, but you don't hear anything because MIDI makes no sound. I'm going to, on my aux track, I'm going to put whatever the virtual instrument is that I want. I'm going to go here with expand. And it opens up. And I'm going to go to the settings. And I'm going to go to pianos. Where's my piano? Acoustic piano. Fantastic. Um, and I'm going to go with a reggae piano because I have no idea what a reggae piano sounds like. And the only thing left over is I need to route the output of my MIDI track to the input of my virtual instrument. And you'll do that here on the output of your MIDI track. Boom, click this, and you'll see VI Piano. Click this. It's kind of a cool sound. So that's a MIDI track and an aux track combination. Or if you want to simplify things a little bit, you can go with an instrument track. And so... An instrument track is a combination of a MIDI track and an aux track pre-made for you. So I'm going to, again, again, use my shortcuts, Shift, Command, N, and I'm going to create a stereo instrument track, and I'm going to call this Expand Pad, okay? Now, with Expand Pad, what I'll do, and I'm going to show my instrument view here just so you can see. 
Um, you don't have to do this to set it up, but uh, for, for the purposes of our work, this, this will help us. What I'm going to do here is all I need to do is throw my virtual instrument on the instrument track. And you'll see here that on the instrument column, there's an output that sets itself up automatically. And now... Now I'm ready to rock. So this has my MIDI and my and a, and a home for my virtual instrument all in one track. If you're going to deal with MIDI tracks and aux tracks, your MIDI track deals with MIDI and your aux track deals with your virtual instrument. If you're in an instrument track, you've got everything in one single track strip. Hopefully that answers your question. Don, do we have any others? We do. We have. Um, I th hope. It, I think we got. Sorry. I think we have time for one more, and it's Bill from Belfast. Does creating master tracks automatically take the output from all the existing tracks, or do you have to create a bus first? <laughs> it's a fantastic question. So, um, when you, cr I think with, um, I'm going to have to double check this. I think with um, Pro Tools first, you have a maximum of four uh, master faders tracks that you can create. And so I'm going to go ahead and create this. Let's see. Yes. So I've got four. Let me try to create one more and it won't let me do. It. I just want to double check to make sure I'm not losing my mind. Create one new master fader. And yeah. So, so at that point I've got a, a maximum of four master faders. Now by default, um, it will want to uh, control the output of your of your entire session. That's so when I created a master fader in my other session, it assumed that that was what I wanted to, to control. However, if you go over here, you can have a master fader control anything you want. A master fader controls output. A master fader has no input. So all you need to do to get a master fader to work is select the output that you want the master fader to control. And if I go back to my other project, maybe that shows it better. Let me open up the recent one, I'm making tracks, yeah. So if you take a look over here, if I go into my mix window, so I'm gonna go up here. So go to the mix window. And if you take a look over here in my, uh, my master fader, you can see on all the other tracks, I have an input and an output. So my input is, is above here. That's my audio input. And we talked about this in the last seminar. Um, my audio output is the bottom little chiclet here. You can see on the master fader, there's only an output chiclet. So the output selector is what you're going to select. So you don't have to bust anything to your master fader. Your master fader is simply like a spigot that controls how much signal is going to go out of an output. And in this particular case, and by default, it, it set itself up because it kind of knew what I wanted to do. Um, it set itself up to control the output that is built in one and two. So built in one and two is what it's controlling. I could have it control other things. I could create other master faders to control, for example, my drum group or a master fader that controls my vocals or, or, or so on and so forth. On Pro Tools uh, Standard and Pro Tools Ultimate, you get many more master faders. Uh, in Pro Tools First, you get only four. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. Dawn, do we have any others? Uh, that concludes the questions thus far, although we know we have many sessions with you, Andy, so that'll be great coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly share my screen to show the upcoming sessions. Um, we do have Andy on uh, Thursday, right? You're covering Beat Detective with Pro Tools. Yep. Um, and then you have sessions next week as well. Um, so we'd like to thank everyone for attending. And Andy, thank you once again for being up extremely early or really late, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, in from Japan there. So we appreciate that. Um, all the videos will be posted back to avid.com at online hyphen, sorry, <laughs> I can't talk today, online hyphen learning hyphen webinars. So you can look for that. So look for our next sessions coming up and we hope to see you all on it. If you do have a question, drop us a line at live online learning at avid.com. And it looks like you have one more thing you want to say, Andy? Yeah, yeah. Just one thing. Um, just a reminder. Um, can you tell people where the recordings are going to be? Sure. Yes. If they go to that avid.com and they go to the online learning webinars, the recordings will be at the bottom of the registration page. 
Great. So we're posting all the webinars there. So if you missed the first one with Andy, you can go there and take a look at that and it'll be there. And again, feel free to send us your questions also at liveonlinelearning at ava.com and I'll get them to Andy and we'll get as many answered as possible. So hopefully we'll look and see everybody on the next session with you, Andy, and you can go get some rest. Thank you. And thanks for the question, guys. I, re I really appreciate it. Have a good night. Have a good day, everyone. Take it easy.